Today with economics and how governments can profit off of the wealth of other countries. Now, in the United Kingdom, a debate is growing in Parliament about billions of pounds the government has collected by taxing frozen Libyan funds. Now, the funds have been frozen long after the collapse of Libya's government. And you may remember the U.S. government put sanctions on Venezuela to hamper the state's treasury, gold, and oil companies. It's part of the continuing effort to back Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. So to learn more, we're joined by Richard Wolf, Professor Emeritus of Economics at the University of Massachusetts Amherst and founder of Democracy at Work. Thank you so much for joining us, Professor. Glad to be here. Well, this is something that is nothing new, but it's obviously come back into the headlines with the turmoil in Venezuela. So I have to just, the blanket question, does the gold belong to the people or the leader? It all always belongs to the people. They're the ones who do the work. They're the ones who produce the wealth. They're the ones who make the rich in their own country rich and the political folks at the top. You know, in the case of Libya and in the case of Venezuela, those people in those countries, the mass of people, they had it hard now for a long time in both countries. They deserve every bit of the wealth they created. And they ought to have that wealth available to them as soon as it possibly can be turned over. Not because they will necessarily do better with it than others might, but because that's how we run this world. We don't give over to other countries the wealth produced in our country. And you know, the British should be the most sensitive to all of this. They had the British Empire, which for a century or more, and in some cases several centuries, ripped off the wealth of vast parts of the world, India, Africa, and so on. They should not be doing this again, especially since they have been involved in some of the political maneuvers that overthrew Gaddafi in Libya and that threatened uh, the government in Venezuela. So this is wrong from multiple levels, and I'm glad that there are at least some folks in England that are saying out loud what ought to be said. Well, Professor Wolf, this is a part of regime changes which are often not discussed when we're going into the headlines of it. Do you think should the countries and the new regime be given the assets of the former leader and whose job is it to make sure that those assets actually get to the people and don't go to continue a corrupt government or more importantly form a new one? Well, usually in the world, and especially under the agreements that created the United Nations, we believe in, and the United States has said it does, self-determination among nations. What that means is the people inside the country make those decisions. They don't have people in other countries make that decision for them. There is a government, it was elected in Venezuela, to say that there were irregularities doesn't distinguish Venezuela from a whole lot of other countries that we can point to. We don't want to get rid of self-determination, a real principle of international law, because we happen to like this government a little bit more than that government. So my answer is, whatever they do in their own country, that too they should be struggling about, but it's up to them to make those struggles and to hopefully get to a place where the wealth they've created is under their control. But to have England or the United States, governments with an axe to grind far away and responsible only to another population, make those decisions for Libya and Venezuela, there is no way that that's justified. Well, and in the present, we're talking about Venezuela because obviously there's actions going on on the ground within Venezuela today. But then you go back after World War II, there was the Nazi German gold, which was recast by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. But much of the gold was ultimately stolen from other countries and victims. Should this gold have been returned to Germany as it still sits, I think, in New York? Yes, I think that that is the same kind of situation. That money should not have been taken. And we ought to learn the lesson when one government goes and takes the wealth of people in another society. All right. Call hello. La Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah, which means all praises to Yahweh, which is the true name of the Heavenly Father, who you people ignorantly call God by Hashem in the name of Yahweh Shah, which is the name of the only begotten Son, who you people ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Those are the true names of the Heavenly Father and the Son. Plus, I do want to give a shout out to the Akim that's pushing and spreading this word throughout the four corners of the earth, who's also uplifting the names Yahweh by Hashem Yahushah. 
and to the confusion of faith brothers and sisters out there, whose bloodline traces back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers, though you may look like one of the heathen nations you're scattered amongst. And same if your seed line traces back to one of these tribes through the man. And if your spirit bear witness with this word and his truth, okay, and you can receive it to the confusion of faith, brothers and sisters out there, if any all these do apply to you, you are Israelites. Okay, to the, to the, uh, you two Akwaf, you sisters that do listen, learn, Shalom, to the elect of the nation of Israel, if you may be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth with his words going out to Shalom to you as well, and, uh, to you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay, you combine, consist, and make up the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the Hebrew Israelites, okay, the chosen people of the Most High. Yahweh and his only begotten son, you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah. Okay? Now, I played a clip on RT, you know, basically saying who gets the gold from the overthrow of governments. Okay? And we're about to get descriptions on how that works. Okay? So I'm just going to start. I didn't put any scriptures together, so, you know, I'm just going to go with the flow. So this is, um, I'm going to start by. This uh Daniels two and twenty. It says Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and set up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Okay? So the point is the most high Yahweh, he is the one, okay, that okay. Uh, set up a king and overthrow a king, right? This is Daniel's four and seventeen. It says, "This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men." Once again, okay. So there's no such thing as free will. Okay, a man's goings are of the Lord. Okay. It give it, it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the basis of men. Okay? And who's the basis of men? Job 38 tells you the uh 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 do huh. Let me just get it. This is Job 30 and 1. But now that they are younger than I have than I now that they now but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I will have disdain to set with the dogs of my flock. Yeah, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished. For one and famine they were solitary fleeing to the wilderness in former time desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and um, juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men, they cried after them as a thief. Okay, so that's right there. So I already give you a hint who he's talking about. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys and the caves of the earth and in the rocks. And who that goes back to? Who does the cave history go back to? The Edomites. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. Okay. Among the bushes they braid, under the nettles, they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yeah, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. Okay. So you know who's talking about Esau, man. And the Lord set Esau up, right? And what was prophesied that would happen as Esau was set up, right? This is Joel. Mm. This is Joel 3 and 3. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given the boy for a harlot, and sold their girl for wine that they might drink. Yeah. And what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zion? So who's that? That's the that's the Hamedic people, who you know as the Africans today, and all the coast of Palestine, the Ishmaelites. Okay. Those so-called Arabs, those people in the Middle East. 
while ye render me, will ye render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah, which is the so-called Negroes, and the children of Jerusalem, have ye sold on to the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. And who are the Grecians? Okay, the Grecians, okay, are the, are the Edomites? Well, they originally the uh, Japhetic people, the so-called uh, 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 who you know and uh, uh, Samoan people. But Esau, as you know, okay, he took, as it says, what Psalms, the 49th chapter, how he changed the names of the lands and named them after himself. Okay, in the 11th verse, that's what he did. He stole, okay, their nationality, just like he stole our nationality. Okay. And that point is that we were sold onto the Grecians. And what happened? We uh, uh, were sold onto slavery, okay? And um, let me see if I get some real quick. So I'll keep it real quick. God finally knows a lot of it. These are the curses. You know, that fell upon you, Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Let me see. I started. Uh, the third ninth verse. This is Deuteronomy twenty eight and nine. This is just one uh, uh, example. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Okay. Actually, that's not it. Uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, this is Deuteronomy 28 and 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And who is that nation which thou knowest not? The Lord said he would send down further down. Okay. This uh Deuteronomy 28 and 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth. As, as swift as the eagle fly. And what does the so-called white people use as their symbol? The eagle. Okay. You see that with mainly here in America. The American eagle. Right. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Okay. We were uh, speaking what? Hebrew. But now we're speaking what? English. Spanish. Okay. The language of our, uh, of our conquerors. Okay. Esau, Edom. But going back up. The fruit of thy land is the 33rd verse. The fruit of thy land. And all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt only be oppressed and cr oppressed and crushed always. And that's what happened. Okay? We uh, uh, uh we built this man's society off of blood, sweat, and tears, right? And what did he do? He uh you know, you see it now. He's uh put us in the captivity. He had us pick cotton, okay, build his kingdom up. Okay, and what did he do? He left he made sure. Esau Edom, the so-called white man, made sure that 
you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, okay, were uh were uh remained on the bottom, okay? He set policies and laws up, okay, to keep you on the bottom while he prosper off, okay, the blood money that's been passed down by his uh forefathers, okay? Which they are their forefathers, okay? And um he doesn't give you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans any credit, okay, for building up a society. Okay, it's all him, right? But that's why the Lord got him, okay? Hold on. It says... Hold on, let me see something. It's locked here. Yeah, Jeremiah 22. Okay. Jeremiah 22. And 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness, and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and give him not for his work. Okay. And Esau... Okay, he only he not only did that, okay, to the so-called Negroes, he did it to the rest of the heathens, but we don't care about the heathens. It's about the nation of Israel. Okay? The point being is he's done this not only to the nation of Israel, but after he's done it to the nation of Israel, he's done it, okay, throughout the four corners of the earth. Okay? Now everybody's everybody's in mourning because of that. Okay, everybody's demanding, you know, uh reparations, which we, okay, as a nation, we don't Need reparations. Our reparations, Yahweh Bashim Shah. Everybody wants uh, 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 justice, okay? And this man literally done that. That's a perfect example of what he's done in slavery. You built the society up, okay? And what did he do? He put his name on all the inventions you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans made. He uh, called you what? Black, okay? All these bywords, okay? He told you that you, uh, so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are in a predicament that you're in because you're just lazy, okay? And you don't want to work. And that's not the case, okay? He set up laws, okay, to keep you that way. That's why I said in Michael 1 and 2, woe to them that practice evil, okay, practice iniquity because it's in the power of the hand to do so, okay? And that's what he's been doing, okay? That saith, I will build me a wide house and large chambers and cut of him out windows, and it is sealed with sealed, sealed with cedar and painted with vermilion. Vermilion. Shall thou reign because thou choose closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him. Okay? And these Edomites, that's the attitude they've been in. Okay? Their forefathers did what they did, but it's not their fault. That I wasn't there. That wasn't me at that time. I wasn't born at that time. You are your forefathers according to Isaiah 14 and the 21st verse on down, man. Okay? So there's no excuse for that. You uh, uh, you benefit, okay, from what your forefathers did to our forefathers. Okay? You benefit off that to this very point. Okay? But thine eyes and thy heart are not but for thy covetousness and for the shed innocent blood and for oppression and for violence to do it. And that's what these Edomites are all about, man. Okay? That's all they're about. Okay? They're not about uh, 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 giving anything back. Okay? But the Lord got Esau's number. Okay? Because now we're in that time. Okay? Where well, Esau is reaping what he sows. We're in the beginning stages of it. And as it continues to manifest itself, okay, it's going to lead to him being nothing, okay? This is, um, oh, man. Second Ezra's. Actually, Sirach, not Second Esther's. Sirach, the tenth chapter, Ecclesiasticus. It 
is Ecclesiastes. I start actually start up at the fourth verse. It's Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 10 and 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. And right, what did the Lord do? The earth, Job 9 and 24. The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. The wicked being the nation of Edom. Malachi 1 and 4, as I always say. And I'm going to always say it. Okay? Okay? Also, Genesis 27, chapter 38, verse 1 down, talks about how Esau's temporary blessing was that he would have the fatness of the earth. That's another scripture. And he shall live by the sword, which he's doing. Okay? That's what he's done since he came into power, which he still continues to do. Right? And in due time, he was set over it. One that is profitable because Esau, okay, being the wicked, he transgressed according to Isaiah 24 chapter. He's transgressed against all the laws, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushah. And now, hold on, Salak here. Turn it up. How you doing? Uh, Salak here. Um, he's, uh, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, he's doing that since the beginning of his rule, okay? And he's destroyed the earth in the process of doing it, okay? He's turned everything upside down. The earth is in mourning now, okay? And the hand of Yahweh is the prosperity of man. And upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor, okay? And, and Esau believes that he got everything he has. This whole kingdom has set up. He got it by his own own will, man. That's a, that's a damn lie, man. I just showed you in the scriptures that the Lord set you up. Okay? And gave you, okay, what you have right now. For prophecy's sake. Okay? Bear not hatred to thy neighbor for every wrong and do nothing at all by injurious practices. And when, you know, a lot of people try to say that uh, we are supposed to forgive our enemies. That's talking about other Israelites. It's not talking about these heathen nations. These heathen nations hate us without a cause. So why would we forgive nations that hate us? Okay? Prideful. Pride is hateful before Yahweh and man, and by both doth one commit iniquity. And Esau is very prideful. His pride is through the roof, okay? Because he's been able to get away with the crimes he's committed, and he continues to commit, and nothing's been done to him, okay? That's why he's prideful, and he believes nobody could take him down. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another, okay? And that's what's happening. We're in the beginning stages of it. Okay, Esau kingdom is going as Esau goes down. Okay, you're slowly starting to see him go. To, you see him decline. You're not slowly seeing. You're seeing him decline. He's falling fast as lightning, as the scriptures say. I beheld Satan. Okay, was cast up, fall as fast as lightning. Quickly paraphrasing it. Okay, Esau's falling and Jacob's rising. Okay, because the Lord is bringing him down. Okay, and what you're witnessing now, all the. Natural disasters that Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is sending upon this place. All the uh, exposure that's being uh, uh, exposed on Esau. Okay, everything. On the takedown of Esau, Edom. Okay? It's all Yahweh Bashim Yahushua. And because what? The Lord is st starting to set up. Okay? Our kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is coming to you Israelites. Okay? And he's going to pay. Okay? For the crimes that he's committed against the Israelites. And upon the planet earth. Okay? Everything that Esau... Okay, stole is going to be returned back to the rightful owners, mainly you Israelites. All of it is going to be transferred, okay, to you Israelites. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Jacob is you, you Israelites, okay? So the wealth, all this wealth that Esau stole, he's going to uh, give it up by force, okay? He's not going to give it up, be like, here, just take it, leave me alone. Esau is not going down like that, okay? Why you think it tells you in the scriptures, Revelations 12 and 12, for the devil uh, coming from um, great wrath because he knows his time is short, man. Because it shows you he's not going to easily just forfeit everything, okay? I started uh uh Job twenty and eleven. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust, which prove, okay, 
another scripture that's proven you uh uh you you are going to pay for what your forefathers did. Okay. Though, cause you still got a lot of these old Edomites. Okay, that they're still around. That's that was uh back then in the fifties and 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 before lynching uh you so called Negroes, man, Latinos as well, and the Native Americans. Okay, they're still around. Some of them are still alive, man. Okay. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it not and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat and his bowels is turned, and it shall gather the gas, gather the gas asp within them. He has swallowed down riches, and he has he shall vomit them up again. Yahweh shall cast them out of his belly. Okay, so Yahweh is going to do that, man. All the riches that you stole, okay, you're going to cough that back up, and it's all going to be transferred to who? The nation of Israel, starting with the elect, under Yahweh Bashim El Shah, man. Okay? He shall suck the poison of ass, the viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he labored for shall he restore to who? The Israelites. And he shall not swallow it down according to his substance, shall he be the restitution be. And he shall not rejoice therein. Because he have oppressed and have forsaken the poor, because he have violently taken away an house which he buildeth not. There you go. Okay. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. Okay. So that's the thing, man. Okay. It was a scripture that I just had to mind. Where did I have to mind? I forgot. It slipped my mind. Okay. And actually, it's not just going to be Esau, okay? It's going to be all you uh, heathen nations. But the chief main nation that's going to get it is Esau or Edom. Because not only is the gold and all the resources going to be transferred for the, uh, to the nation of Israel, but... This is uh uh this is Jeremiah. I start. I'll start at the uh the eleven verse. For I am with thee, said the Lord, to save thee. Though I make full end of all nations, whither I have scattered thee. Yeah, I will make, not make a full entity, but I will correct thee and measure and not leave thee altogether unpunished. And he's talking to what? Jacob, the, the nation of Israel. For thus said the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. There is none to plead thy cause that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. And who is he talking to? Our people. Because what, what is that scar that cannot be healed, okay, by our enemies? Slavery, bondage, okay, captivity, okay? All thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Okay? And none of these nations are seeking, okay, for the uh, build up you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. They want to keep you in this dead estate, which is failing. Okay? They failed at that. Because the scriptures say that we will awaken to who we were. We will remember ourselves in the land of our captivity. Okay? As it says in Baruch. The uh, second chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? Why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy... I read that already. The 16th verse. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devouring all thine adversaries. Every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. Okay? So these nations are also... These heathen nations, especially the nation of Edom, are going to be, okay, our, uh, our um, reparations from Yahweh Bashim Shah because of what we went through in this captivity, okay? It says, um, I'm going to end it with this. This is uh, Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. 
And that's what the Lord's going to give us anyway. Starting with these elect. He's going to give us, okay, the whole, he's going to give us dominion, man. Okay? Oops. He's going to give us dominion, okay, over these heathens, okay, and the whole entire planet. And we're going to rule the galaxies, okay? Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel, man. So these nations, they have trampled over the nation of Israel, right? They have uh, put us in captivity. They, you know, they mocked us, called us by words. They're going to get the same thing, okay? They're going to drink of the cup that the nation of Israel have drunk of, okay? So that's my lesson. Call her Lord, Allah, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah. Um, I the one, right to Zah, which means Lord willing, this was edifying. Shalom to the elect out there. Peace to you.